But what is going on YouTube? So super exciting day today. As you can see, I have a guest with me. Oh, I'm putting it right away, guys. Guest with me. This is Scott Buchanan, the drummer from Unleash the Archers. And um, so a little story behind this interview. Um, about two years ago, I interviewed uh, Brittany. Awesome. Check it out if you guys haven't seen it yet. But um, and I was always saying next time you guys dropped another album, I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to interview her again. I'm going to bug her again. And then <laughs> I came and I'm like, you know what? No, everybody interviews Brittany. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't seen really any interviews with Scott, man. Yeah, and no. I'm a drummer, which I feel super dumb saying that to you. But like oh. I dabble, you know. Yeah. And my son's getting into it. So I just thought it'd be and I and Brittany even said you're like the comic relief of the band. So <laughs> on, man. Yeah, no, well, I try. I try to keep it light. We'll see. I, I got an to, hour, hour to prove myself. See if I'm funny here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, pressure's <laughs> on, man. But thanks anyways. And I know you got busy, you got a new album coming out. Um you guys will be touring soon. I know I'm gonna see you in September. Yeah. In uh in Florida. I think you're coming to Janice in yeah, St. Petersburg. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's on the Powerwolf run? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sick. Yeah. That's going to be huge. I'm excited for that one. Absolutely. <laughs> so always great live, but yeah. thanks again. We just so, haven't, uh, we haven't opened up for a band in so long. Like we've been like since even just before COVID and then all through COVID, it's just like headline after headliner, which is great. But also like, uh, I think we're just looking forward to living that other life for, for one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Well, you guys are gaining the momentum, man. It's 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 pretty awesome to see, and I know you're just going to keep. So I always say one of you, one of the most criminally underexposed bands, yeah. but you guys are breaking out in this. Yeah, thanks. No, appreciate that. So I think the way we'll do this, I just got some questions, and um, there's actually a fan group that asked me to ask you a bunch of questions because again, I think okay. they were excited too. Like, holy crap, Scott's going to interview. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get these out here, man. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, I'm so excited. Um, you want to watch Ghost in the Mist with me because I haven't I haven't heard or seen that yet. So I'm interested yeah, to see like the breakdown, yeah. you know, like uh, what went into it and things like that. So yeah, totally. All right. So the first question. Um, I, I've always been super interested in this. So on a scale of one to 10, one being uh, self-taught and 10 being like Juilliard, what's kind of like, <laughs> like your experience in uh, just drumming, education? Yeah. Uh, probably on the lower end, like uh, definitely no like post-secondary and definitely no like high school or anything like that. But I did take drum lessons like from like the local music store kind of thing when I started playing like back, back, back in the day. And I, I probably did like, yeah, I don't know, four or five years of like that. And like, and it was like, I don't know, syncopation books and little worksheets and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I guess like fundamentals and stuff like that. And then, uh, uh, but then, yeah, that was it. It's not like, uh, like Nick definitely did. I think he did like a fine arts degree and stuff like that. And, uh, I know Andy did it like a bit of like music school and stuff like that. Uh, and Britt did, uh, choir through university and stuff like that. But no, yeah, none of that on my end. <laughs> <laughs> You're the self-talk guy. Well, I yeah. feel like drummers are, we're like one of the type that can kind of get away with that sometimes. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've even seen guys who just, they'll set up their drum set, like almost opposite or backwards and they just figure it out and they just go with you know, it. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's like, yeah. Constraints and creativity go pretty well. <laughs> if you don't know, like all the possible options, maybe you come up with more interesting yeah. stuff. Who knows? So like what, so when did you start? Like how old were you? Uh, I was in like, uh, grade, I think it was like in grade six or seven and like, um, all my, my friends at the time, uh, just happened to be guitar players, bass players and stuff like that. And they wanted to start a band and nobody knew a drummer. So it was like, I think the one buddy's dad had a drum kit and like played the drums. So I just started like messing around on it. And then parents bought me a kit and I started taking lessons. And yeah, we started our first like little band or whatever and did that for a while. And then I played in like a bunch of like kind of punk bandy type stuff with like other friends uh, through, through, I think to like, I don't know, like, Maybe like, yeah, grade 11, I think I started like kind of as I got into high school, stopped playing drums as much and went to university and stopped playing drums totally. And then, uh, and didn't even have a kid or anything like that. And then I met some, another group of friends 
who and it was exactly the same scenario like it was a bunch of guitar players and a singer and a bass player and no drummer and it was like oh i can play the drums kind of thing and <laughs> i at that time i like, probably hadn't played for like five years or something but i went home at christmas and got my parents to drive me back with my drum kit and like moved it into our like dorm room and uh and started yeah we started jamming and then that was I met Britt like right around that time. And then that band kind of broke up and then we, yeah, we started UTA pretty quick after that. Oh, perfect. So that leads yeah. right into Like I was going to try to work that in there. So like, how did <laughs> that happen? So like, okay. So then you met Britt, you broke up with that band and then you guys started up the band. So what made you guys get together and say, okay, we're good. We're, Cause you guys are the like last, well, I don't say last remaining, but you know what I mean? Like the original, yeah. right. Um, what made you guys say, Hey, we're going to do power metal and we're going to call it unleash <laughs> the archers. Like what, how did that happen? It, I don't know that it started as like power metal, power metal. Like I think we were uh, in the other band. It was like me and the old guitar player, like Brayden. Um, and like, he was the like behold the devastation demons era guitar player. Um, yeah. And like the band we were in was like a, like, I don't know, like a metal core screaming band and stuff like that. And it was just like, just no traction basically we were like <laughs> so we were looking for it's like what's what's the easy way to get people to like care about what we're doing here and it was like we if we had like a, a female vocalist that was a very good singer it's like i just happened to to know one of them I know the, <laughs> yeah i got a question and it was like suddenly it was like a whole other avenue of like writing songs like you could have like big catchy hooks you could have like the things that people like to listen to in music right like yeah. not that like screaming bands can't have that as well but it's you know you got to be really good at what you do which i don't know that we were and, <laughs> and so it's like uh just having brit come in there was just like an easy way to like people people liked it right away because the same reasons people still like this band i think right like what brit does is like really really awesome so um yeah, we were just kind of, <laughs> I'll say, like hitching our wagon to that, maybe. <laughs> and that well, I know that power metal, like I, I don't know about other people, but like I'm a child of the '80s, and power metal yeah. just it just speaks to me, man, because it's just it's yeah. epic. And in the '80s, everything like we were unapologetically just cheesy and over the top. You yeah, know, it didn't matter if it was a toilet paper commercial or whatever; everything was like, you know. And so, <laughs> like that that '80s feel, you know, stuff like Beast in Black, and I'm like, oh my my yeah. soul just like. Yeah. Ah, you know yeah no it's so, cool it's like yeah because it's got like um yeah it's still kind of got like those like pop sensibilities right that like make it yeah like the song structures and like the courses yeah. and everything sing along and there's a lot of, it repeats in the right ways and stuff like that so um cool. yeah i'll say we so, probably didn't get well we got a visitor here um <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't get more uh like power metal -y, like uh until until like Andy came along, I think was when that started to like be more of a like, yeah, the solidified sound. More driving leads and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. All right. So a little bit about, oh, you know what? I eh, I was going to ask you about your kid breakdown. I don't know if you go oh, yeah, that okay. real quick. Yeah. I, I, I think that China splash you have is kind of like helps your signature sound a lot, man. I like when you use that yeah. for your, just the rhythm piece and everything, but like, can you just break down your set real quick? Yeah, for sure. Um, I used to play like a, a way bigger kit. Um, and then I like, I kind of, I, I can't remember when, I think this was probably early Unleash the Archers. I was like, maybe even before we played live, I was like, oh man, I got to strip this down to like the basics. And then I was like, when I start just like needing more things, I'll like, I'll kind of add them back. Cause I was like, at one point, I think I had like four rack toms and like two on the floor. And it's like, what is all this stuff? And like, I, and so, yeah, I, I, and <laughs> I don't know if it speaks to me, but I still have that same setup. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I never really mastered that, but, uh, yeah, just like really simple one up, one down, uh, sometimes like, a I think it's been a 10 and a 14 and maybe now it's a, a 12 and a 16. I think I've got a couple of toms, so they just kind of switch out or like, we don't, I don't bring my own kit out a lot. We'll like do rental kits. And so it's just kind of like what often, like what they have, like, I'm not too fussy about like dimensions. That's tricky um yeah it is <laughs> but yeah yeah, it, 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 yeah it's even tougher too when you're like uh you'll do a lot of kit sharing on some of these tours right and you'll some guys will have like very specific requirements and you kind of have to go with the flow so it can be hard but uh the crash the china call out is totally uh totally a good one like um 
I basically, I think like without understanding or knowing that you could have like two hats in your kit, I put that there as like an ox hat basically. Uh, and so like, I think, and then I just like never gone back. Cause I still like kind of use it as a China, like we'll do like, like bigger, like slower breakdowns and you'll kind of like get that push on that, which like would be more how you would use a China normally. But then I'll also like, I play a very like non gongy sounding China. So it just has a lot of wash. So it kind of ends up like in my mind, at least sounding a lot like a, like a big set of like really sloshy, loose open hats. And that's, that's largely how I use it. Uh, and it sits in that same pocket that you put your auxiliary hats into. Um, so yeah, that, and then other than that, it's just, uh, I've got like two crashes, uh, left and right. And then yeah, rides and hats. Cool. What kind of pedals? Uh, I play Axis, the uh, like a 21 longboards. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been on Axis for a while. Uh, a couple different sets. Not, uh, I was endorsed. I think at one time they gave me like a discount, but I don't know that <laughs> it was like a big, real, <laughs> big the reason we're just where we were. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, they, they, they did help out with like, I think buying the one, but, um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty sick. Um, I switched, I was using their triggers for a while. I was using like e-kits and then, uh, I was using foot blasters and I kind of, I don't know, just kind of go with whatever, whatever's working or not working at the time. <laughs> So a question that like when I asked this group, like more than one person asked me. And so again, you know, as a drummer, I, I, I've watched Awakening like probably a hundred mm. sometimes, you know, and a yeah. uh, question that always comes up, even like drum instructors like that is that that technique you do with the double bass, right? Yeah. Um, now let, let me give my theory real quick before you answer, but a lot of people say, oh, he's doing a heel toe technique. He's doing it. Yeah. I don't feel like you are. It feels like you're using the rebound from the first hit like you do with a regular Perdido, like, um, or is it more of a heel, heel toe? I like, I've always called it heel toe, but like, I've actually like changed that technique. Like you can see in that video, it's, uh, my heels are like up fully on the, on the foot plate. That's what I'm and, saying. They're not really, they're not, they're not doing this. They're yeah. Like, and I like, I don't know, like if I like misunderstood that technique when I started learning it or not, but that's like how I started. And it was totally that it was like, drive it down with your heel. And then like, catch the rebound with the toe and it was like but uh i found like through time that that's like a like very labor intensive uh motion and so i've actually like uh over like i don't know the last year or so i've been uh working to change that to like now i'm kind of at the point where my heels are like off the the uh the footboards and it's like a more traditional heel toe where i'm actually like I, I think like properly like leveraging the pedals and getting the like the bounce stroke a lot better and it's like uh it's been a quest <laughs> to, to get there because it's like you don't you don't know how like uh ingrained these things get and I, I like I'll say as I get older like uh learning new stuff or like changing patterns is like just getting harder and harder like you, you know what you you are like perfectly segueing in my into stuff I'm gonna ask you so in my interview how, with Brett, was, how old are you <laughs> me no I thought that was your I thought that was your segue <laughs> oh yeah no 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 um so like uh, Britt said something kind of interesting, you know, we were talking about how, um, kind of like how, you know, you don't think about drummers as like really playing a big part in, in songwriting, you know, mm -hmm. usually, you know, we kind of create that, you know, that backdrop, you know, that, that drum riff, and then you paint everything on top of it, but it's like, yeah. they could be doing every, the same thing for like eight measures and you change yeah. it up to change the feel of the song. You do all these crazy things. And she's like, oh yeah, he does that all the time. But then she said, but there's some things that you do that you, it kind of pisses you off that you did that because now it's harder oh, yeah. later to play like <laughs> yeah, live yeah. or whatever. So can you give like yeah. one or two examples of parts of songs where you're like, son of a bitch, man, why did I do that? Yeah. Uh, because like, here, here's the thing I've noticed, like with drummers, what you think is hard, isn't really hard. Like as yeah, a listener, yeah. but what, yeah. what isn't hard, like, what is it? Tool sober, the verse for tools. I can never play that because of the yeah. way the bass went with the up, with the up hat. I could never yeah, get yeah. that coordination down. The rest of it I could play easily. Right. But like, yeah. So like what, what, it, what, so how could you explain uh, that? Like one thing, like I did, uh, like, and I think this might actually be in part just cause I was like switching techniques, but I used to do a lot of like, uh, like a fill where underneath the fill, like I'd be like running 16th notes, like do, 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 on my kicks. And there was like, I think when I was in the like heyday of, uh, with my heels up on the boards technique, uh, that was something like super easy. But then as I've started to like, kind of change this now, um 
I really need to have my like body weight in the right place in order to like evenly kind of like start a kick sequence. Right. And so, um, coming into a fast fill where like, say I'm like over on the hat and then it's like, I'll have to do like a big body shift or like make sure my weight's right. And then it's hard to get exactly like in that place and stuff like that. So like, sometimes I'll like, I'll cheat those sort of strokes live because it's like, and <laughs> I'll, I'll, cheater, do, yep. the, I'll do like the middle stroke. So it's like, do, 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 do. And it like, you get the same sort of effect, but like the, the shots that would be like under the snares or under the symbols, maybe uh, like aren't there and stuff like that, because it's like, I just find it's like hard to get there sometimes, but I think that's like, yeah, that's part of, you know, you're, you're always working, you're working on it <laughs> all the time. Right. But yeah, uh, it's like, it's a, yeah, it's a lifelong quest. <laughs> you know, it made me think, I'm like, okay, what is it when you're, when you're live watching that Scott is like, Oh shit, here comes this part. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's songs like that. Like, I mean, like, like, just songs like faster than light, right? Like it's just a slog. Like it's like the the drums are just like, and the 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 thing too is like you're just the background. It's like not even flashy drums. It's just like a workhorse track where it's like, and then and it's the worst too because you watch the guitar players and it's just like open chords. Yep. And they're just they're like, doing their kicks and dancing around, having the, and fucking yeah, with that's each other. The time of their life. You're dying there back and, there. <laughs> and you're just back there, just like pumping a beat, <laughs> like kill me. And that's just it. You know, watching you guys live, you do like. 14 songs like that in a row, man. Yeah, like, yeah no, there's, there's a bunch. But then like, like, okay, but there's a there's a flip side of it because like uh, we'll do a track like uh, like Carry the Flame. And I think, I, I don't know that it's like the hardest track, but like I've definitely heard like Andy and Grant like bitching about like how tricky that is to play live. And then for me, that's just like an absolute like arena rock, like walk in the park, right? So it's like- yeah. It's a given. You take. could have one beer in your hands while you're. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Like that, that song is like such a victory lap. We like, we put it in the, like, usually put it in the on tour and, uh, or like pretty close to the end. And it's like, yeah, it's like you've done all the hard work and now you just get to like hang out and play. Yeah. <laughs> Carry the plan. And it's so cool when I found out that Andrew sings those parts. I thought you had, yeah. I forget the John's, uh, I forget the name, but there was a, there was a certain person I thought you guys had as a guest. Oh, I brought it up. Howard Johnson. Is that the name? Okay. Yeah. Uh, John um, from, but he's yeah. actually got a pretty, he's got a good voice. Yeah. Uh, Andrew. Pretty impressive. Oh, man, I'm gapping on that name. Yeah, he does. Uh, Andrew's a, a, a crazy talented guy. Like he, uh, I don't know if multi instrumentalist is the right word, but he's one of these guys that can like, you know, Oh, I've never played that before, but picks it up and then musical like, savant. Playing, yeah. Playing Van Halen jump on like, a. <laughs> Well, that's what everybody always says about you guys. You guys are all just <laughs> master class, just, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, Appreciate super. that, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, so real quick, so um, just what are your thoughts on the current album? Like, again, I've heard one song, you know. Yeah. I mean, what direction you guys going musically? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, like, we kept a lot of elements the same. It's still, like, a it's a concept record. I think that's sort of, like, we've realized, like, that's maybe, like, the crux of our of our art and that's like how we how we best work too it like gives like a really good overall structure like i think if you just told us to like write 10 songs unrelated i don't even know that we could <laughs> i don't no, even know it, that we could do it <laughs> yeah and we talked about it a lot too with brit just how that that narrative piece is so cool and i don't even know if you remember i was gonna show actually have it here because it fell off the wall but I, I made um, a map of oh, yeah, that. Yeah. No, we, we have this in our jam spot. I think that's Yes, right. I was yeah. hoping you did. <laughs> yeah. See, because when I saw her, when I saw you guys, she said, oh, I'll put this in my jam spot. And she's like, put it with yeah. all the other crap that we got today. You know, and I'm like, We're oh. We're starting to get like that. a massive collection. Dude, I am so there, stoked like. you have it. And you <laughs> yeah. signed it, you know, like I've got, what is it, Grant Buchanan Monastery and stuff oh, like man. that. But you guys signed over. Yeah, but yeah. I always wanted to get this frame, but it's just a weird size, you know. Oh, okay. I'm so stoked you, you recognize that. Yeah, no. I'm like they probably uh, threw all their other shit that they. <laughs> no, no, it's like it's up on the wall, like because like we get like a, a fair amount of those things in there. They're awesome. Like people put a ton of time into this, like you did, like like generating that whole map, right? And like we, uh, we've got like a bunch of like people have done like a lot of the band logos, and they'll like you know they'll like uh, what's the word I'm looking for CNC, but like the 3D cut it out or whatever, and like people like yeah making plaques and logos like out of wood and like people put so much time into these things and stuff so it's like and yeah like jam spot's perfect for it so we got jam like, spot's only so big i mean <laughs> it's, a, it's got a surprisingly high ceiling i think we can accommodate a lot of stuff so don't <laughs> let that slow you down if you were thinking of making something <laughs> that's cool i mean that's cool and that's the other thing cool you guys are so just you know like fan 
base friendly. I mean, you guys are playing yeah. D D and D on <laughs> yeah. online and just, wow. um, Not as much you know, as again, meeting you guys. Crazy. It's just, it's great. Yeah. Awesome. So definitely keep that part up when you guys get super huge. <laughs> don't turn into dicks, no. I guess. Is well, the... Absolutely change. Forget our fans. Forget where we came from. Yep. <laughs> nope. Over, over here <laughs> sipping on my, uh, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> Well, all right, man. Well, okay, let's shift gears a little bit. So just everybody's dying. And I mean, again, you talk about however much you want, but like uh, being a new father, man, how's that? Mm. How's that going? Uh, I'll preface anything negative that I might say later with it's awesome. I, hey, uh, I'm with you. <laughs> with you. Uh, yeah, I'm lo- I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, it is very hard, <laughs> but it is. Uh, but I'm we're loving every minute of it. But it's like, um, yeah, it's 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 really challenging. Like it's challenging on like what what you can endure and like how much you <laughs> have to like change your uh, priorities and change the way that you do things and things that you kind of just took for granted and and that those kind of things go away and maybe you weren't quite ready for that to go away and you're like oh man <laughs> but you you need to kind of suck it up but it's the other side of it is like it's coming with so much cool stuff and so many cool experiences and like uh she's just kind of starting to uh to talk now which is just opening up like a whole other side of this where it's like you're like you you knew what she was like and you knew her personality but now you're like you're really meeting you really know it now she can communicate yeah yeah exactly and it's it's awesome it's really cool but also very challenging because now she can say no and and it's like here we go That's but, cool. Yeah, yeah I've got four it. myself and I definitely know, oh, you know, wow. and that's why everybody says, yeah. you know, just, don't, you know, make sure you every moment just because I catch myself all the time, like, dude, just five more years and we'll be able to vacation again. We'll be able to do this. We'll be able to yeah, just go out yeah. with our friends again, you know? Yeah. And I mean, for you, it's got to be like even more so because I mean, God, you're, you're you're on the road and all that other yeah. stuff. And it's just, you, wow. yeah. I find myself wishing for the future where, you know, yeah. we can enjoy those things. But you know, and then they yeah. grow up and you're just like, oh, man. But and yeah, you, yeah, you wish you had it back. Right. And like, that's the thing. I, I'm definitely guilty of exactly that same thing. Like I've said, like, oh, man, I can hardly wait until she could just do this. And this is going to be so much easier. But like, I think like the the real like trick of that is that comes along. And yes, it makes whatever was really hard, like a little bit easier. But another new hard thing comes along. Oh, I lost. No, it's OK. I, my camera oh. goes off in 30 minutes. Oh, I see. Uh, another new difficult thing comes along that you're like, oh, and it's just it's just like one more thing. So, yeah, yeah I think you really have to like deep breath and soak it in because like, I mean, already like we'll, we, we've taken so many photos, like we've taken a billion photos of her and we'll mm-hmm. like we have displays like around the house, like like Google displays and she's like and we just dump them all into this like photo album and we look back and I was like, there's no way that she looked like that, that like, you know what I mean? Like that didn't happen. I don't even remember that. Like, and fortunately we've taken all these photos, but like, honestly, like already, like things have happened. It's like, she'll never, she'll never have a little nap where she just like falls asleep on your chest again. Right. Like that's over. And it's like, Oh man. (laughs) So like you gotta, you gotta live in it while it's happening. I think. Yeah. Like my son's seven, my daughter's eight. And like, like, it was even, I think last night, my son just kind of laid on me like for the first time Mm. in like a year, kind of like this. (laughs) I remember this, you know, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) this kid's a monster now. Um, How young is the youngest one? Uh, He's, he's seven seven okay yeah. yeah this morning we he had a baseball game um oh, cool yeah he got a hit got a run you know hey, a little speed demon on the yeah. he started the drums about a year ago he's actually dying to meet you um okay i, I was gonna see if maybe in a little bit i'll call him in here and he can yeah he yeah can 100%, just meet totally. you real quick i think they're I both huge fans that... What's oh, yeah, that? nice i think i saw one of uh one of his videos maybe on your channel uh he was like drumming along i can't remember what the track was but maybe that was <laughs> it was enter sandman yeah, yeah. That At that was, time, yeah, yeah, he was playing yeah. it for like, he learned it like two days prior to that. So he, yeah. he kind of picked it up pretty quick. Now he's like, you know, shredding that. He's yeah. got it down, but yeah. Sick. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, for that's sure. Cool. Whenever. Uh, he'll, he'll be stoked. That's So that's awesome. All right. Um. So, okay, let's get into geek culture real quick. Let's <laughs> do that, man. So, okay, this is a funny story. When I when I interviewed Brittany, um, I was trying to think like, okay, how can I, how can I bring the geek Cause you guys are awesome with that. Like I'm, I'm huge into fantasy and sci-fi and things like that. Um, so I set up a game called name, name that map where I had all the different okay. maps from oh, different like universes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, but, 
But to help me set that up, I was watching some of her videos where she was like, I think it was where she was like explaining the different tracks okay. um, from one of the albums. And what? behind her, there was this big, big bookcase. I'm like, OK, mm. so they've, she's read Dark Tower. She's yeah. read this. She's I started like all the ones that were back there. And so when I interviewed her, she's like, no, that's all Scott. Scott did this. <laughs> Scott I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so I'm like, dang. So things like um, what was it? Uh, Wheel of Time. Yeah. And a few other things like that. So yeah. I guess my question, I mean, we don't got to do the name your map thing, but um, <laughs> like if you can name like your three favorite fantasy universes and your three favorite sci-fi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Like um, I've, I'll say first, I'm a huge, I might have to pull out my, uh, just so I nail this question. Um, I, I read everything. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to fail, dude. <laughs> No, you you're, F you're plus. grading me, man. Uh, I just don't want to leave anything out. Um, I listen to audiobooks. I don't oh, me read too. physical books anymore. Uh, yep. Not that I can't read or something, but... Um, this is for I show, just... man. <laughs> See, that's like, that's... Brit, like, refuses to make the jump, and then, but then constantly, constantly complains that she doesn't have enough time to, to read, and it's like, reading is like... I don't know, for me, it was such a bigger act. Like I had to like put time aside for it and like dedicate it to like, I'm going to read. And whereas audiobook, he's like, I'm on the way to something. I'm falling asleep. I'm whatever, whatever, throw in headphones. And it's like so convenient. So as a result, I think I'm, yeah, a much more voracious reader, if you can call it reading than Brit, because I just am able to get through so much more stuff. Yeah. And some uh, people can't do that. Some people aren't like auditory, you know, Key yeah, to that, which my wife isn't, but I totally am. Like I can, I can even remember as I'm driving, like where I was when I heard this part of the book. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. So audiobooks work super. Do you well. find though, like flipping the script here? I'm asking the question now. Do you find that that oh, your great. memory, your memory retention for audiobook books is worse than read books though? Um, I think they're good, but the thing is, um, I think the narrator can make or break it. Yeah. Like yeah. I've listened to books and I'm like, dude, I think I would really enjoy this if the narrator was better. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I had one. What was it? Uh, it was the Alistair Reynolds books, like Reynolds. Books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Brit Re Revelation space. Books. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That guy yeah. sucks. I don't that know sucks. what was going on in that book. Like it was like, I talked to, I read that because Brit was like, you have to read this is like one of the best books, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like, okay, fine. I'll like totally take that. I probably read that, listened to that book three times with the amount of like rewinding I had to do. So it's just like, what is happening? Like, it's it so like, crazy because that's yeah. exactly the one I'm thinking of, man. And that was like, I totally like, I think that like is what was happening was there was like, because there was like two or three different like storylines. He, like, he didn't pause. He didn't pause between pause the storylines. Between paragraphs. It, he'd switch paragraphs and like you thought it was just as like a period and it was a paragraph swap. And if you had visually been reading that, your mind would have like reset yeah. until you figured out what the next like paragraph was about. But now it's but a different character talking. Yeah. And then like, and suddenly you just you'd be like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense. And like and then I'd no. have to pause it and I'd be like, son of a bitch. And I rewind like, and I go I gotta back rewind and, the next the last 45 minutes because I'm sitting here thinking it's this other dude. Yeah. Dude, that is so I finished, crazy. I finished that book and it's like I think that's the only book on Audible that I've left a like a review on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like lost my shit because I was like. And if you read about cool. the narrator, a lot of people were pissed about that. And I, yeah. I think the subsequent books, he he kind of did a little better. The other yeah. thing I think with him is he tried so hard to make different like accents that he did it so mm. much you couldn't even understand him. It's like, dude, yeah. Just, and talk man like you Down don't the middle yeah you're not you're not in school anymore man like you're not impressing anybody just... yeah. and i mean the, the premise is amazing i'm like i just think i should really enjoy this that whole idea of like the the sub light speed travel to another star system for yeah, generations yeah. and meanwhile you got these other ships and you, you don't know if there's still people in there you don't know if they're yeah. what they're doing yeah. or plotting and there might be another ship behind you but you don't know because it's been generations like some of that <laughs> was like whoa yeah. Yeah, it was sick stuff. It was like, I'm like, I, I should like, really I, enjoy this better than, <laughs> yeah, than what blood. happened. But yeah, like I'm not like ragging on you. <laughs> I don't want to call him out. I think it was like, there was just something wrong with the production of that book. But um, but yeah, uh, sorry. We need to, yeah, uh, hey. What was your question? <laughs> your three, your top, your top three uh, fantasy. I think probably like my number one, like what jumps to my mind uh, was the Joe Abercrombie series. Uh, I... I loved those books. Like, Looking that was amazing. Like, 
And like, I don't know. Yeah, you you audio booked them or you read them? He is one of the best narrators I've ever Dude. heard. And I've actually seen interviews oh. with the author and the narrator together. There's this dude who actually got an interview with both of them. I'm like, you lucky mother. Sorry. Yeah. No, but like, a, yeah, he is so, so cool. good, man. Dude, like the the like the number one, the dialogue, like it is just so well written, but then it's also so well read. And it like, like I honestly think the experience of those audiobooks is probably better than you reading it yourself because like he did such a good job. Like it and it like, yeah, it enhanced the it enhanced the books. Like, yeah, oh man. Yeah, yeah like Glockta, awesome. like he is Glockta. Like if they if they made a movie or it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't just like with like I don't know if you've heard the audiobooks for Expanse, but like that narrator was so good. His yeah, Avasarla yeah. was better than Yeah. Avasarla was Avasarla. Like and it's yeah, a dude, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> that happen? Uh I don't know. I guess. <gasps> Wait, there's usually like other things you can do when you see this kind of stuff. Dude, I didn't know. touch anything. Whoa. No. I thought I could make confetti fly down there, maybe. Um what was that? Yeah, his Glockta and like, because there was so much like internal dialogue, right? Like Glockta would say something out loud and then think a thought in his head. And like, he had like those like two distinct like tones for that. And so you like, it never had to be told to you. You just inherently like understood what was happening the way that he like read it. And I, I, you know, I've never even looked at the physical book. Like I'm staring at one right now because it's on the bookshelf that my camera is on. But like, I'm sure that was all like italicized and stuff, but he just did such a, such a good job. God, I love those books. Dude, uh, I'm forgetting that we're re recording this. Hey, guys, sorry. We're just going <laughs> to eat this shit up for a while. You're going to have to deal with it. If yeah. you haven't checked out Joel Abercrombie, though, just amazing, amazing. Did you author. read the companion trilogy, too? That, like, the, um, what was it? Uh, Besser, Cold, and Hero. Yeah, yeah. And, so the, yeah. it's the first Law trilogy, right? Yeah, that's, like, and the then, main three. And then I read a few of his novellas. Um, I'm just finishing up A Little Hatred about okay. the kind of, like, peasant uprising. Yeah, yeah, worker yeah. uprising. Um, but yeah. one of my favorites, the one he did where I, I forget what it's called, but where the basically that female was killed, well, killed, but then she survives and comes back and kind of gets this band of mercenaries to take. It was almost yeah. like a kind of Monte Cristo kind of. I think I think plot. that's best served cold. It's been a this comes back to my memory retention question, but <laughs> that's best. Served, yep, you're right. No, I'm sorry, you're right. That's best served cold. That was one of my yeah. favorite standalone books by itself. It was yeah, just, that one's that was so sick. good. Um. What else? I'm, okay, so Joel Abercrombie. Name. Got it. Yeah. Hey, and real quick, just to add to Joel Abercrombie, why he's so cool is like, and you probably appreciate this too, it's like, it's the most realistic. It's fantasy. But like, it's but, real, right? Like, if somebody yeah. gets gets hit in the shoulder with an arrow, like, yeah. it ain't just kind of like, oh, he's fine. I'm like, yeah. he suffers for like a year, right? And yeah. like, and you hear about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it's like, it's weird. Sex and is like, is like yeah. awkward and, and weird. And you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. every, it, when you win a battle, it's just because you stumbled the right way or it was lucky. Right. Yeah. And, and that's everything's what's so like, neat about it. There's like no glory and no like waxing over. Like everything is just completely raw and in a way awful. <laughs> like, and everyone's crooked and like no one. Yeah. It's just, it's so, yeah, it's so well done. And it's like, it is a fantasy world, but it just, it almost like didn't need to be. Cause it's like the, the magic is like, not even why you're there. Like none of like, mm -hmm. none of, none of that is even it. You're there to hear the characters talk to each other, which is crazy yeah. for a fantasy novel. But yeah, it's the dialogue. It's so well done in those books. That's cool. And I have to thank Britt for that too, because when we were talking about this, she mentioned she liked Joe Abercrombie. Like, oh, check that out. Yeah. Know? Yeah. No, I think so. I, I think I got, it's weird like we're uh we're bad for like we recommend books to each other but then almost like because the other one recommended it we don't read it i don't know what it is i don't know how to describe it that that uh revelation space was like one of the few <laughs> examples where we've gone over i actually maybe we're getting better um but um i recommended that to her and i thought it wasn't gonna like it wasn't gonna work but she read the first one and was just like oh my god these are these are amazing but I could never get her to read the Dark Tower series. Um, I don't know why, but yeah. And it's funny. I showed her that that map and she said Dark Tower right away. I'm like, oh, wow, nice. And she's like, well, it says it right there. On the th I'm like, oh, <laughs> what is that thumbs up? But like, um, so what were your thoughts? I, I felt like after he had his accident, the books just went downhill, like Wolves of the Kala and all the way on. I don't know, man. They just didn't. Yeah. It was a weird. Oh, and it's funny, too, how. Every book, he would almost put a disclaimer in there, like, I don't know where this is going. Like, I think he just sparked <laughs> up a, a, a blunt before he started writing. 
Yeah. And then just like, let me just see where this goes, you know? I mean, like, The Gunslinger is very much a different book than the other six after it. Like, you can tell that, like, he never probably, I don't know actually what the real story is, but it feels like he never intended to write the rest of the books after that first one. Because that first one's such a, like, a stoic, minimally written, like, piece of art and then suddenly the rest are like Stephen King books and you're like oh okay yeah and like <laughs> but I remember liking Wolves and Call because like that's the one where like the android in the is at the farm or whatever I can't remember what his name was oh yeah yeah uh, like, and I thought I thought that was all cool like yeah like this like broken down future that's like kind of reverted back to the past you know and nobody understands where like the technology came from I thought there was cool stuff in that one but I definitely remember the sixth and seventh book. I was kind of like, I I think we need to <laughs> to wrap this up, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, that's fair, I suppose. <laughs> they were great. I, so, I reflect positively on those books. Yeah. So I guess to add to it, I mean, okay, you so said Joel Abercrombie. I think the Witcher series is amazing. I mm. that's Brit has read those. I haven't read those, but I play the games, but I've never read the books. Yeah. Oh, oh, games yeah. like even one and two. Ah, uh, no, sorry. Three. <laughs> Three? Okay. Yeah. Nice. No, I got onto that a little later, but it was good. That's cool. Any any Warhammer at all? Have you ever gotten into that? Dude, that's what I'm reading right now. Gotrix and Felix. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, uh, I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm probably a dozen books into the Horus Heresy. Yeah. It's okay. some of the deepest, most amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's, so, it's so deep and dense. It's so good. I, I don't play the game. I don't know if you play the tabletop, yeah. no, but like no. the lore Never. is just, yeah. and I love like the, the almost like the Romanesque feel to oh, it. You yeah. know, everything's very yeah. Gothic, very yeah. Roman style kind of like. Um, really neat. Who got me, who got me into those books? Do you know, uh, uh, do you know who RJ Bailey is? He's like, uh, uh, he's from Scotland. He does like a podcast, but he's also like an audiobook narrator. And, uh, yeah, we were hanging out with him a bit and, uh, and just kind of talking audiobooks and like who's your who's your favorite narrator blah 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 and he tipped me on to those um and i started reading and i think i got i got pretty far like i did i don't know i want to i don't want to say 10 maybe you're farther than me i think fulgrim was the last one i read oh fulgrim that's a good one yeah that scene where they all turn evil in that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That concert oh my god <laughs> yeah no there's <laughs> There's some sick stuff, but then so I, I found like whatever, whatever was drawing to me or drawing me to there at first kind of went away for me a bit or like, I don't know. I don't know. Something was, something was changing. I'm not sure. And so I, I kind of, I just stopped reading those, but um, is it worth going on? You're, you're farther on than I was. Well, what I did was like, here's the essentials. Cause there's yeah. like 50 some. That cover yeah. It. At least I think. Yeah. yeah. And they gave you, they gave you like, I think it was like 20 books. Like these are the ones you should probably do. So after that's like Mechanicum. Right. Um, and I, I finished that one. I don't know what the next one is, but I changed I gears I, and went back to Abercrombie. Yeah. I'll yeah, do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta, you need a palette cleanser every now and again. Right? <laughs> <Palette Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I have seen infographics that are like, uh, like don't read all of them. You know what I mean? It was like, this is, if you're liking this part, go this way. If you're liking this part, go this way. Yeah, and uh, I should probably revisit one of those because there were definitely like aspects I liked, but then I I was like just I think plodding along chronologically, and I I got lost in the weeds. And yeah, because it'll just focus on one little faction for the whole. Yeah, thing. exactly. And like if that doesn't interest you, then you're sitting through a whole book of it, and it's like yeah. So, gotcha. Okay, man. Hey, how about so I got a list of questions from some yeah. from fans. Let's see if we can break these down a little bit. Good questions, actually. Some of them I already asked you, but like, um, let's see here. I'm just going to kind of go through some of these. Um, somebody was asking, you know, what's it like playing on a small set, but you, you kind of explained that a little, you got a bigger set and all that good stuff. Um, let's see here. What is the secret to you having such an amazing mustache? <laughs> Born with it. No. Born with it. <laughs> That's Derek Piles. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a, it's not a bad mustache. I don't know why I started growing this, but now I don't know that I'd ever shave it. And uh, my dad, uh, I was just talking about this the other day. My dad's had a mustache the entire time I've been alive. He's never shaved it. I've like never seen his face without it. And then I was starting to wonder, I was like, I, I don't see myself ever shaving this off. And I was like, oh man, am I able to do this same thing to my kid? <laughs> yep. And when you do ever shave it off, your, your daughter's going to freak. 
<laughs> oh, I've yeah, done that probably. before. I've just done it. And my kids look at me yeah. like, and my dad, <laughs> it's kind of the same thing with my dad. He's always at least had a mustache, you know, and one yeah. year he was like, he was like in his late sixties, he was all gray and everything, but he dyed yeah. everything black and shaved everything off. And he was like Elvis <laughs> for Halloween. And yeah. I almost had to go to therapy, man. It was so <laughs> weird. I would imagine too, like maybe, I hope it's not that bad on me, but I'll bet you if my dad did shave it at this point, the skin would be like completely different because it's just never been exposed to you. <laughs> just be a white like that. <laughs> Exactly. It'd be like so. A bumpy like, and it's, awkward. It's, yeah, exactly. I'd love to see it. Jeez. <laughs> Let's see here. You got people asking about when you're going to come to Iceland. Oh, when are you going to go to Arizona? Uh, I mean, is there Arizona on the Power Wolf tour? Is there not? I don't know. These are yeah. just questions. Uh, we would love to come to Iceland. That'd be sick. I, is that, I've never even heard of bands doing that. Is there, is there a place people play in Reykjavik? Is that a thing? In Iceland? Yeah. I, I don't know. Do you guys have venues in Iceland? <laughs> you just do <laughs> curling? A, oh, man. <laughs> I started curling lately. I would totally do some curling there. <laughs> really? So yeah, disc golf, curling? That's <laughs> like curling like with the, with the ice and scrubbing the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, me and like a bunch. It's got to be a Canadian we, thing, man. It must be. I don't know. We were, <laughs> yeah, we started though, and like I didn't, I didn't expect to like it. I was kind of just going along for the ride, and then uh, the league ended like last week, and I, I genuinely like, what are we gonna do on Monday night? Like, I was like, I would look forward to that so much. So Freaking curling league. I haven't heard of anything <laughs> more Canadian than that. that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Okay, Richard Kemp asks, what is it like being compared to someone from Scotland? Do you know what that means? <laughs> it sounds like an inside joke. I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see here. Um, what's your favorite race in class in D&D 5E? Is that like the fifth edition? I guess. Uh my D and D knowledge, like playing when we did that, those streams, I was like literally, we did like two primer sessions. And then we did a primer session not recorded because we knew it was going to be so bad where we had to like. I downloaded this the other day, man. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going hard. Wow. <laughs> we we did the opposite approach where nobody read anything. And we just relied on our DM to <laughs> gradually explain what the hell we were doing. So I don't know that I have a favorite race in class. Uh, what am I playing? Like a human. I'm playing a human bard right now. And I think I played like a human wizard or shaman. I don't know. Some sort of magic or in the first the thing we did. Um, I see like Grant and them. Grant's character looks pretty cool. He's like a druid shapeshifter or something or other. He gets to do some pretty cool things. I might try that next time because it just looks a little more flashy. Like being a bard is like a little silly. It's I, I'm leaning into it, but it's like it's pretty <laughs> funny. I like it. I just yeah, I, guess, I, I keep I don't know. thinking of have you ever seen um um box machina? Uh yeah, that sounds familiar, but Scanlan's hand it's a it's <laughs> it's uh, uh anim, anime, I guess, but okay. uh Scanlan is the is the bard, he's this little dude. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it okay, like a yeah. comic relief the whole thing? I, I yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, like, Scanlan's hand he'd do a thing and there'd be like this <laughs> hand that would come out and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he was horny as hell, you know. He <laughs> I feel like that's the only angle you could play that. I don't know that like you could play like a completely serious bard, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, we got a badass bard over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Like so Brandon Huber Huber asks, ask him where are my fucking beers? <laughs> tell him Boxy one. sent you. Do you know that, that one? one? That one I know. Yeah. That one you know. <laughs> he's one of our old buddies from uh I don't think he lives in Hinton anymore. I think he's maybe in Edmonton now, but he uh they were like OG fans from like some of the first shows we played and we uh, just kept in touch with him forever. And obviously I've stolen his beers over the years. <laughs> I think that was Armstrong Metal Fest. I raided his cooler maybe. Oh man. It sounds like you're a little like you were, you know, <laughs> I might owe him some. <laughs> who who are your biggest influences when it comes to playing the wind chimes? <laughs> Jeff there are Binder. so many, so many great chimers to name. I don't even know where <laughs> to, where to begin. Uh, no, that's been, yeah, that's been a really good running joke. We, uh, that was, a, I don't know. Did, have you seen that CTV thing? Uh, we, we played a, like, uh, we got on the news, like, uh, in Calgary and we like, but it was like, 
we were playing that night and we had to do like an acoustic set live on the news. I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, obviously, we couldn't, no electric guitars, couldn't bring the drums in. And it was like, oh man, I'm going to sit there and like play like a little hand drum or a cajon or something. And I was like, okay. <laughs> no, I was like, <laughs> I was like, we're trying. Yeah. yeah, in my in my bard like character, I was like, how can I make a kind of a joke of this? <laughs> so I said, sat there the whole time and then played the chimes at the end. But then we kind of, it's been a runny joke. We uh, we did uh, Acoustapex. We did like a music video for it, uh, and it was the same thing. There was like no real drums in it. <laughs> it was just like a bit of like percussion like uh, elements. And so yeah, just and pulled out the chimes again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, okay, somebody has a picture and it says, "Do you believe in Bill Squatch?" Bill Squatch. I don't Bill even know Squatch. what that is. The picture, the picture of look like somebody who looks. Oh, here, I think I could share my screen. Let me see here. Can you see it? I can. Uh, well, barely. It's it's pretty. Oh, there we go. <laughs> is that a, like a Buffalo Bill thing or something? Dude, I have no idea. I I kind of assumed that was you when I when I heard when I read the thing. <laughs> It kind of looks like the suit that Grant was wearing for like the Dawn of Ages video, but uh, uh huh. <laughs> I'll say, uh, I'll say, uh, yeah, sure, I believe it. I mean, it looks pretty real. Yeah, it doesn't, man. <laughs> Did we have a video back in the day where there was Sasquatch running around or something? Yeah, yeah, and that was that was before Grant was in the band, like officially, but um, he was living with us at the time, so that is Grant in the Sasquatch suit in that video. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, sweet. I don't. Let's see here. I guess one more. Uh, you, ask you if if it's fair to be so talented and so good looking too. Ah, uh, get out of here. Get Not at all. Here. Not fair. <laughs> too kind. Too kind. Sweet man. All right. Well, hey, thank you. I mean, we're we're at about an hour now, and I think yeah. we're not like forty five minutes or so. But um, thanks a ton, man. I think I've riddled you with enough questions. Oh, all good. No, I appreciate it. But thanks a ton for for taking your time. We're gonna go check out Ghost in the Mist though. If you're still cool with that, yeah, hundred percent. Let's do it. We'll release that in a little bit. But uh, thank you guys all for joining us. And hey, real quick, is there anything you want to plug? I know that you guys um, have got uh, vinyl releasing. I just bought that. Yeah, um, there's like a promo or something where you get to listen with the band or something. Or yeah, uh, <laughs> I am the wrong person to ask that. I know Britt's been like cooking some things up. Uh, we get like a listening party, and there was like a big merch giveaway. I think her and Napalm are doing that. I should probably be plugging that better. But uh, yeah, we got a couple more singles out, records coming out. Go check all that stuff out. Um, yeah, and then uh, we got some tours and a whole bunch of festivals. So if you're if you're in Europe this summer, uh, definitely come check out the festival and then uh, catch us with, uh, with Power Wolf in the fall. Cool. I'll be there. Absolutely. Okay. I'll try to get backstage. Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let it, let us know we can we can sure do that sounds great all right well thank everybody for joining us and uh we'll see you on the next one